Today's episode of Variant is brought to you by Lumosity. Today on Variant, I give you guys the history of the Joker. Welcome to Variant, we love comics more than that feeling of finding the last t-shirt you want in your size. I'm your host, Eris Quinones. Over the course of the show, I've done a bunch of history of episodes, but thus far, I've only done heroes, so I thought it was time to change it up a bit and do the history of a villain. And what better villain to kick this off with than with the clown prince of crime, the Joker. I know, I couldn't think of a better choice, and I'm sure most of you would agree, so let's put a smile on those faces. I know, that didn't make any sense, but I just really wanted to say it. The Joker is easily one of the most well-known and popular comic book villains ever created. Actually, the Joker is just one of the most popular characters in all of pop culture, period. He's also one of the few comic book villains that is just as well-known and as loved as his respected hero. With that said, let's see how he came to be. The Joker was created by Jay Robinson, Bill Finger, and Bob Kane. He first appeared in Batman issue 1 in spring of 1940. Joker was influenced by actor Conrad Vendetti in the film The Man Who Laughs, which is extremely evident as you all can see by these pictures. They also use inspiration from a Joker playing card from an ordinary deck of cards, which we all know the Joker card has become a huge part of the Joker's mythos and quite literally is his calling card. One of the Joker's most popular storylines, The Man Who Laughs, was even titled after the movie I just mentioned, The Man Who Laughs. Now, as for the Joker's comic book origin, it's one of the biggest mysteries in all of comic books, and to many of his diehard fans, we prefer it that way. Because like I said before on the show, it's one of two rules in the Batman universe. Batman can never kill, and Joker's full origin must always stay a mystery. The instant Batman kills is the instant our hero falls, and the second we truly understand the Joker, that's the second he becomes less scary, because we always fear what we don't understand. What makes this mystery even more mysterious is that over the years, in multiple comics, the Joker hints that his origin is hazy even to himself, and flat out said it was in one of the most loved Joker stories of all time, The Killing Joke, saying, sometimes I remember it one way, sometimes another. If I'm gonna have a past, I prefer it to be multiple choice. Now, with all that said about how his origin is a mystery, we do have a pretty good guess to what his origin is, or at least one that's widely accepted with all Batman fans, though, as with everything else with the Joker, nothing is ever definitive. But the origin I would be talking about is the origin we are given through flashback sequences throughout Alan Moore's Killing Joke. The flashbacks explore a possible origin for the Joker, portraying him as a failed comedian who remained nameless in the book, pressured into committing a crime as the Red Hood to support his pregnant wife. Batman's interference causes him to leap into a chemical vat that disfigures his skin, combined with the trauma of his pregnant wife's earlier accidental death, the man goes insane, creating the Joker. Current writer of Batman, Scott Snyder, just borrowed elements of the iconic possible past for the Joker for his rendition of the Joker's past in Batman issue 24 of his storyline, Batman Zero Year, and continues the idea of the Red Hood falling into a vat of chemicals, becoming the Joker, as portrayed in previous storylines like Detective Comics 168 and, of course, The Killing Joke. As for what the Joker's real name was before he became the Joker, well, no one knows for sure, but what's most widely agreed on is his name was Jack Naper, as that's what he's referred to in the 89 Batman film, and even in Batman the Animated Series, it's shown and said his real name is Jack Naper. And since many Batman fans consider a lot of Batman the Animated Series canon just as much as the Batman comics, I figured it's worth mentioning, so you can do what you wish with that little info. But now that you know about his origin, let's talk about the Joker's progression through the years. In his initial dozen or so appearances, starting with Batman issue 1, in 1940, the Joker was a straightforward homicidal maniac. The character was to be killed in his second appearance in Batman issue 1 after being stabbed in the heart. Finger wanted the Joker to die as he was concerned that allowing reoccurring villains would make Batman appear inept, but he was overruled by then editor Whitney Ellsworth who suggested that the character be spared. A hastily drawn panel demonstrating that the Joker was still alive was subsequently added to the comic. The Joker then went on to appear in 9 of Batman's first 12 issues. What's a cool little fun fact about the Joker is that he's known as the first comic book super villain, which was even stated on the PBS documentary Superheroes A Never-Ending Battle. The use of the character lessened by the mid-60s when Julius Schwartz took over editorship of Batman comics in 1964, and the character remained largely absent throughout the decade, until this version of the character was adapted into the 1966 television series Batman. The campy show's popularity made DC want to have a similar tone with their comics, but once this series had ended in 1968, Schwartz was free to begin reversing the trend. The Silver Age introduced defining character traits for the Joker, like the use of acid squirting flowers, trick guns, and the committing of goofy, elaborate crimes, and a lot of other stuff we've come so familiar with. 
The Joker is one of the few popular villains who continued making regular appearances in Batman comics from the Golden Age into the Silver Age of comic books, as Batman comics continued publication through the rise of mystery and romance comics. The rise of the Comics Code Authority in the 1950s saw excessive comic violence banned and resulted in the Joker's transformation into a goofy, thieving trickster with none of his homicidal, menacing features from his earlier incarnation. In 1973, after a four-year disappearance, the character was revived and revamped in Batman stories by writer Dennis O'Neill and artist Neil Adams, starting with the Joker's five-way revenge. The Joker returns to his roots as a homicidal maniac who murders people on a whim while enjoying battles of wits with Batman. O'Neill said, my idea was to simply take it back where it started. I went to the DC library and read some of the earlier stories and tried to get a sense of what Kane and Finger were after. O'Neill's 1973 run introduced the concept of Joker's legally defined insanity that resulted in the Joker being sent to the Arkham Asylum, which was called Arkham Hospital back then. Adams also modified the character's appearance, changing his more average body type to look taller and leaner with an extended jaw. The 80s would bring us three of the best Batman slash Joker stories ever written, such as The Dark Knight Returns, The Killing Joke, and A Death in the Family that had the Joker murder Jason Todd Robin, which was decided by readers who voted via phone for Todd's fate. But most recently, the Joker chopped off his face and nailed it to a wall, only to later wear his own face as a mask to prove a point to Batman and the rest of the Bat family in the mind F of a storyline called Death of the Family by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. Now, I couldn't talk about the Joker without at least mentioning his lady friend, Harley Quinn. Her real name is Dr. Harleen Francis Quinzel. She was an Arkham psychiatrist who went mad and fell in love with the Joker. A mad love, so to speak, as that's the title of her origin story. Joker would lead her to a life of crime as Harley Quinn. She she was actually created for the Batman the Animated Series TV show, but became so popular amongst fans, she made her way into the comics and became canon in the DC Universe. And now, as I always do with these history of episodes, it's time for me to recommend good storylines in the comics for characters I'm talking about. And there's definitely no shortage of good storylines that involve the Joker. You have Batman issue one, which showcases the first time Batman squares off with the clown Prince of Crime, the Joker's five-way revenge in Batman 251, The Dark Knight Returns, A Death in the Family, Death of the Family, The Man Who Laughs, Arkham Asylum, Mad Love, the Laughing Fish in Detective Comics issue 475 through 476, and of course, The Killing Joke. All of those are just a few storylines that showcase the awesomeness that is the Joker. In conclusion, the Joker is pretty much the epitome of a supervillain, as he has no real rhyme or reason for what he does. He simply just enjoys chaos and madness, but most importantly, he lives to piss off Batman. You want to improve your brain performance and live a better life? It sounds intimidating, right? But any brain can get better and Lumosity makes it easy and fun with games based on neuroscience. Lumosity is like a personal trainer for your brain that lets you build your own customizable training program to enhance your memory and attention. Plus, get detailed training summaries and stats to keep track of your progress and see where you need to improve. Over 40 million users have already experienced Lumosity's breakthrough brain training. What are you waiting for? Start training with Lumosity right now and discover what your brain can do. Check out lumosity.com forward slash variant and get your learning on. First up for Wednesday, November 20th, we have Green Lantern New Guardians issue 25. After a stunning end of Lights Out, where is Kyle Rayner or when is Kyle Rayner? Answers to all these questions in this issue. Here we have Infinity issue 6. All roads lead to this. The oversized conclusion of the Marvel Summer event, the Heroes of Earth versus the forces of Thanos. And finally, we have Trinity of Sin Pandora issue 5. Following the shocking events of the Trinity War, Pandora can now physically harm the seven deadly sins. And now, my fellow comic friends, it's time for me to leave you once again. But until next week, be sure to like our variant Facebook page to keep up with the show and all things comic related. You can also follow me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash Aris underscore Quinones. But I look forward to seeing you guys next week when I talk about all things comics. The Joker is easily one of the well, <laughs> one of the well known hints to, <laughs> to have a pretty good guess to what his origin is or, or at least, or at least, uh, 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 uh,